Attention channel members, there is a world download out for this world right now. More on that later in this episode. Hello friends and welcome back to the Minecraft guide. In today's episode, we're going to progress the world even more with some simple farms that we, we kind of overlooked here. Each and every one of the four farms we're going to build today is a farm I recommend you build in your world too. Ah, a beautiful morning back inside of the Minecraft guide world. Oh, it feels good. In today's guide episode, right at the beginning, I got a, I got a question for you. While we wander around in the forest and inconspicuously look for any single blade of grass, oh my god, where did all the grass go? <laughs> I want to collect some seeds. I don't want to break the beautiful ferns. I can't get them back. There's no grass. What? Anyways, this is now episode number 10. Earlier on in the series, if you remember, we set a goal to take on the dragon by episode 25. But there's, like, a lot of beautiful new things. Genuinely, friends, I'm, I'm wondering what you're thinking here. Would it be cool with you if we push the dragon goal back so we could check out some of the new stuff, like Snip for Trail Ruins and maybe even more? Or other options? Should we still focus on the dragon nice and early and then maybe do, like, all that cool new stuff later on? Let me know what you think down below, and that dawn, our farm extravaganza begins. All right, guys, you're probably wondering why I'm not looking you in the eyes directly right now, and uh, it's because I'm embarrassed. I'm, I'm really sorry. A topic, farming, a uh, basic farming. Yes, a topic that we have not talked about at all <laughs> in the Minecraft Guide. Whoops. The Minecraft Guide series is a series all about Minecraft. It's a series all about tips, tricks, cool adventures, nice lore, and even more. And... I, I skipped over, like, the ultimate basic thing. Farm. Now, to my credit, we do have this beautiful, wonderful farm that I think is way better early game. But still, admittedly, probably not the best look. Let's rewind a little bit and talk about some basic farming. First things first, we're going to want to pick a spot for our brand new, wonderful, kind of improved farm. I was thinking maybe, like, we got the starter cabin right over there. Maybe we set a small farm over here. Look, it's not going to be much, but... It'll be something. We set a small farm up over here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go two, then we're gonna go one right there, then we're gonna go two more right there. Then this is gonna be the very corner of my farm. Then I, I, I think to maybe give this farm a little bit of breathing room, we'll do a little bit more terraforming. Little side note here, as I continue to add more and more builds to World Swan, I get more and more attached to this place. Uh, the end goal was never to live over at World Spawn. I wanna move out and find something more beautiful later on, but... <laughs> I'm getting way too attached. Somebody stop. Now you're all Minecraft veterans around here. I'm sure you know. But just in case you're that one brand new person. We're going to pick a spot for the farm. We're going to go ahead and build a nice outline for the farm. But uh, technically you don't have to do this. You could just throw the farm right in the ground. With our quaintly beautiful little starter box set up over here. And a tiny bit of terraforming done right in front of it. We're basically good to go. I'm going to move inside of this farm and start filling it back in with a little bit of extra dirt. After you pick a spot for your starter farm, you're going to want to make sure you have the right kind of blocks around here. Right kind of blocks, 100% of the time, it's going to be dirt. And for a basic food farm, if I use a hoe on sand, I get nothing. But that would be really cool, wouldn't it? And once you have dirt, you're going to need a little bit of water near the dirt. Specifically within four blocks of the block of dirt that you're going to farm on. So like that block, definitely within four. That block, within four as well. But all the way over here, this one, if I tail this. Well, terrible news. If I tail this block all the way over here, it's always going to stay light. And actually then break. When you're farming, if you have a farmland block that is staying light, that means it's not close enough to the water. And eventually it's going to decay. And after that, you're going to pick your favorite seed of choice and then just plant the seeds. After you plant the seeds on the soil, as long as they're hydrated, it's basically good to go. At this point, all it is is a waiting game. There's nothing that I can do. The different crops are going to go through different growth stages. Right now, I'm trying to grow a little bit of wheat for today's episode. Now, two uh, slightly more advanced farming pro tips for you. Your crops are going to grow a little bit faster if you plant them in lines. Your crops will also grow a little bit faster if you give them a decent supply of light. Without enough light, your crops will not grow or even on life. Farm number one, check done. All I need to do at this point is wait around. Enjoy. <clears throat> okay, you know what? On second thought, maybe that's kind of boring. I got a better idea. It was but a couple episodes ago, a very pressing matter entered into play dramatically. Our friend right over here, it needs a name. I did something that I thought was really fun. I always love to see the ideas and now the results are in. The number one winner name, this camel's name, for the rest of the series, forever, is Camelotl. 
<laughs> Camelotl. Oh my god, Camelotl. I would have never thought of that. This is beautiful. I would have thought like Jim, I did Tom, Mark or something. But Camelotl is beautiful. With like 500 likes at the time of recording this episode, Camelotl is a winning comment. To... Oh, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What do we have here? We have a visitor. Oh, it's a day of first, first farm, first camel name, and even a first raider. Hmm, pillager, pillager, what are you doing here? Hey, you want to leave me alone? You want to not embarrass me right in front of my house? You got to get out of here. No. Why was there a pillager here? Hmm, good question. And to maybe, actually, more importantly, they're looking like Abraham Lincoln here. Where was the... Oh, you're over there. Where are the other patrollers? <laughs> My friends, you better be careful. Your friend is right behind you. Oh no. In Minecraft, on any difficulty that is not peaceful, give it a little bit of time and some pillagers, some patrollers will patrol your world and come visit you, seeping your health away. This little uh, situation, the visitors that we have going on here, this is called a patrol. A patrol consists of some evil, dehydrated, villager-like mobs called pillagers. And typically, there will be like three to four pillagers, including a pillager with a banner on its head. And that's the one I can't find. All of the pillagers are a problem, but the pillager with the banner on its head, that's called the pillager captain. It'll give you an effect for a raid. These patrols will usually spawn within a couple chunks of you and walk around, usually towards your direction. If you're busy, like you go inside or something, then they can walk right past you. They didn't even see you. But but if you're outside under the great blue and the yellow square in the middle of it, they could have wander up to your project, your farm or something, and find you. I can't find the, the captain anywhere. That means we definitely have a pillager just wandering around somewhere. <laughs> uh, hi, that's great. I feel so comfortable. Anyways, I was going to say, before we were so rudely interrupted, the runner-up names. Nuts and at, -AT or All-Terrain, Awesome Transport. Oh, those are some beautiful names. Thank you all so much. So my farm currently is still set up, ready to go. I've been near the farm, so it is slowly growing. But the problem is here, uh, slowly. The farm is slowly growing. We can see over here, we have a piece of wheat that is getting close here. But it's not quite there. By taking a slab and dropping it in the water right there and then placing a composter on that slab. Because there's a slab inside of the water, the composter won't go into the water. Instead, it'll sit right on top of the water. In the composter, I can throw something like sweet berries right here. If I throw enough sweet berries inside of the composter, eventually, it will fill up all the way, just like that. Then I can harvest it for bone meal. If we're tight for time, we can use bone meal to speed up the farm. If this farm right here is on growth stage number one, like it's just getting started. After that, it'll grow up to that stage right there. After that stage, I believe it's this stage, then we have this stage, and then finally, if I bone meal this, we get a final product right there. When your wheat is golden, it's ready to be harvested. To harvest it, all you need to do is hit it. You'll get a piece of wheat, and you'll get some seeds. It's smart to replant the seeds, and then we'll go and get some more sweet berries. Bone meal time. <laughs> Just like that, two pieces of wheat done, cooked up, and ready to go. And almost a third one. And now that we have two pieces of wheat inside of our inventory, we can move on to the next step, and that's going to be mobs. Sweet mobs. One final tip that I got for you before you wander off and collect mobs, bring them back to your house, is consider where you're going to actually be locating those mobs. What kind of situation do you want to have them in? I think for this first mob that we're going to find, correction, I know, for this first mob that we're going to find here and bring back over to home sweet home, I want a pen built out of fences and fence gates. I would like a pen built out of fences and fence gates. And before I can do any of that, my friend Tree Chopples has made his way into this episode. And well, 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 would you take a look at that? Just as I rejoin my world after kicking Tree Chopples out, the farm is ready to go again. Now that our first two rows of the farm are fully filled up and we have a little bit of wheat, we're going to expand the farm by planting just next to it. Technically speaking, these crops will grow a little bit slower, but it's not that big of a deal. It's not that noticeable. Now, I'm going to be honest with you here. I don't judge me too much, but I kind of don't know what I want to do with this farm. I, I mean, I know that I want to have like a basic pen square here, but I, I couldn't decide where I want to position it. I was thinking maybe over here next to the farm because, you know, farm and farm. But then I was also thinking maybe expand and put it under the beautiful cherry tree, a little romantic. I might just have to add more cherry trees around the base. Should I do it? You dare me? 
Animal pen, animal pen. For this animal pen, because there are mobs out there in the wild that do not like this animal, we're going to want to make sure we don't have any blocks immediately next to it where something could jump over. I think this gap should be fine. And typically, mobs will not pathfind like that. Only me. Goodbye, sweet cave that I feel emotionally attached to because I found my very first piece of lava inside of that cave. You will be dearly missed. Goodbye. So we had to talk a little bit about some basic food farms, specifically wheat, because if we want to go out into the world and bring some friends back home with us, specifically sheep. If I want to go out into the world to find mobs to bring back home with me, sheep, cow, chicken, oh my. If I want to give these mobs a much better life, then I gotta have to find the food that these mobs like. In Minecraft, almost every single mob, at least passive mobs, have a food that is called their tempting food. For the sheep and for the cow, it's gonna be wheat, which means whenever you hold a piece of wheat in your hand, if you get close enough to these mobs and hold their attention, or in other words, stay close enough to them, they will lock onto you and follow you. On Java, this is even gonna work if it's on the offhand too. It's pretty amazing. That means we can throw the wheat in our offhand and free up our main hand for like making a path or something like that, maybe placing torches or maybe even eating. Not every single mob in this wonderful game is gonna be different. For example, if I hold wheat over here, our friend, the Camelette, does not care. It just buries its head in the dirt, in fact. It doesn't like wheat. I think this one wants, like, cactus instead. Anyways, mob, 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 you're gonna wander with me all the way back over to here. Now, uh, mobs, they're interesting in Minecraft. Some mobs can despawn if they're not contained properly. To properly contain the sheep over here... Oh, man, it's raining. Is that a bad omen? Are you bad luck for my base? Oh, no. To properly contain a sheep, we're going to go ahead and locate it inside of a relatively small pen. Once that sheep over there is inside of that small pen, it's safe from despawning. It can't wander off and go away forever. But what if you want to keep a mob, but you don't have the item that you need to be able to, like, make sure it doesn't despawn or move around or anything like that? Well, my friend, then we got boats. Boats are one of the most powerful things in the game. Not only can you use them to explore early on like we talked all about, but you can put almost any mob. Typically, the rule here is if the mob is smaller than the boat, it can go inside of it. Now, there are some exceptions, like for example, the panda. But yeah, usually if a mob is smaller than the boat, it can go inside of the boat. Then you don't even need that tempting food, item, thing, whatever it is to move the mob. Just get in the boat and move the boat. Or leave the boat down. If I were to have found this sheep and I wanted to make sure it didn't go anywhere too far, didn't despawn or anything like that, I could have just dropped the boat down right next to it, like this right here, move the mob into the boat, and then leave it in the boat. If a mob is in a boat, almost any mob in the game, then it will never despawn, no matter how far you get away from it. Anyways, back to the wonderful new friend, the sheep. Sheep, sheep, you're gonna follow me. I got a wonderful friend for you over here from a foreign distant land. You two are going to live the most happy, romantic, and joyful life together. You're gonna live free, you're gonna roam free, and you're gonna eat lots and lots of grass. When farming sheep, the number one thing to have is grass for these things. If you have a grass block inside of a sheep pen, then the sheep can regrow its wool. Sheep can regrow its wool. It's something I think we maybe talked about a little bit, but with a pair of shears, we can go ahead and snip the wool off the sheep. When the sheep's body looks like this, or on bedrock edition, the speckles are colored if it's dyed. Well, when a body looks like that, it is completely useless to us. All it'll do is walk around, look cross-eyed, and make noise. We gotta wait for it to regrow. And wait for it to regrow? You did it! I'm so proud of you. Every single time, a sheep eats a grass block, and unfortunately, there's no way to force it to do it. But every time it eats a piece of grass, the grass turns into dirt, and the wool regrows. It's kind of funny, because the sheep is one of the oldest mobs in Minecraft. Like, it's been here for a long time, but it's kind of actually a relatively complex mechanic. But the cow doesn't do this, it's just cross-eyed. Now, just like it is for our farm over here, it's all a waiting game. The sheep is going to wander around aimlessly until eventually it's going to decide to eat again. Now, once our sheep friend has decided they've had enough, they want their wool back. They will eat the ground, the wool will regrow, and then they're ready to go. When we use a pair of shears on a sheep, we'll get anywhere from one to three pieces of wool every single time. So those are sheep. We'll come back to them in a minute, but now it's time to move on. To move on, we'll harvest this farm, replant one seed, but make sure we keep some seeds. Next up, it's time for the chicken. Ah, chicken, chicken, I remember seeing a chicken inside of this wonderful world that you can now officially download somewhere over here. Channel members, legend tier and higher, there is a world download for this very world out right now. I think my long-term plan here for this world is to try and frequently release world downloads. It's episode number 10 right now, which means in the world download, like the newest one, there is going to be every single thing that we did in today's episode. It's going to be up to date as to now. 
chicken, chicken. Oh my gosh, there's so many chickens. I did not expect such a party. Uh, I need only one of you right now. I'll come back for the other in a minute. You're with me. To check out a world, download for this world if you're interested. As soon as you become a channel member, check out the member tab of this channel. There will be a link to the download right over there. Drop our humble little world into your Minecraft folder, and then you should be basically good to go. Chicken, chicken, oh, chicken, where did you go? Oh, going for a bath in the sauna. I see, I see. Well, actually, go for a bath inside of my... No, go for a bath, in, bath inside of my boat. By the way, to tempt the chicken around, it's seeds. Instead of wheat this time, it's like just a straight up... It's like just a straight up thing that actually makes the seeds. Chicken are another absolutely amazing mob to farm early game for a couple different reasons. Now, believe it or not, I kind of can't believe it, but it's actually redstone time. It's time we make our very first redstone related thing in the world, a hopper. Now I got a warning here. This chicken farm, look, it's really not gonna be much. This will not be the most beautiful thing in the world. In fact, this is gonna be the ugliest thing in our entire world. Oh, no way. <laughs> oh, no way. I imported two exotic chickens. They're over at the beach right now, but there's another one just standing over here. What? You should have told me you're just here. Uh, anyways, this is gonna be the ugliest build in the entire world. I'm not even gonna try and hide it or trick you. It's, it's not gonna be pretty looking, but it will work and it's gonna be so easy too. To get this little thing started here, we're gonna put a hopper in the ground and put a chest going into it. We're gonna build two blocks up all around it. Then we're gonna find a chicken, maybe nearby, maybe far away. We're gonna carefully push that chicken into this thing. With two blocks up high like that, that chicken's not gonna go anywhere. It's trapped forever. After that, back over at the beach with the seeds in the offhand, we go ahead and open this book for you, chicken friend, and open this boat for you, chicken friend. Now, chicken friend, chicken friend, you follow me, both of you. You fly, you fly. Yes, yes, come this way. Chicken are great for their food that they produce, but also the eggs. You could use the eggs and a couple different crafting recipes to make other foods. Also, another wonderful drop that the chicken has, I always forget about it, is the feather. If you wanted to, you can harvest the chicken for their feathers. This little farm that we're going to build over here with a chest and a hopper and a couple chickens. Well, this little thing right here is going to get us eggs fully automatically. That's the number one thing I'm worried about from the chicken right now. So check this out. With one chicken or two chicken inside of this thing, we'll feed one of you a seed, feed you a seed, and you're going to jump right in nice and easy. Then they look at each other. They breed. That's the first mob we bred. There's a new baby chicken in there. And also, over time, the chicken will lay the egg because we have a hopper right there, an item that, by the way, picks up anything that lands on top of it. It will automatically move those things into the chest. Well, just like that, just like that. The chicken lays an egg and, and it picks it up. Now we have free, easy, automatic eggs. And another one. Wow, it, it's going crazy. Now, another way to get chicken, if you could only find one, is you could take eggs and throw the egg. When you throw an egg, the egg has a chance to spawn a baby chicken. No luck there. Now, just like that farm, there are mobs out there that don't like the chicken and it'll take it out. So to make it nice and safe, we'll put a trap door in and then break that. Now, anytime I want to add eggs to it, I open the trap door and throw chicken in. No big deal. Tell me this thing is so beautiful, please. And so finally, here we are. Weed farm going crazy. Two other mob farms set up and good to go. For today's basic mob farming extravaganza, there is one final mob that we need to get to. But there's no chance that I can do this next mob so dirty and make something horrendous like that. See, I'm thinking it's sad because this mob is a very, very special mob to me. Very important, especially later on in the world. We will give this mob a little bit more of a luxurious life with a small little gazebo. All right, so it's not much, so don't judge it too harshly, but in small gazebo, right in the middle of the situation that we got going on here. Starter house, farms, little smeltery. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's small, but it'll do the job perfectly. If you know me, then you know this next farm oh, is one of my classics. This is one of my favorite farms of all time, and absolutely, 100%, it's a must-have titan. So look, 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 all you're gonna need to build this farm is one more hopper, a chest, uh, some stairs, and then some building blocks. Pick a spot for your farm. This spot could literally be anywhere in the world. Then we're gonna dig down to the ground. We're gonna put a chest right there. Then we're gonna slap a hopper, like practically right on top of it. Oh, like that, it's beautiful. Now it's time for some solid building blocks. We're gonna go ahead and start filling this thing in and also building it up a little bit. On second thought, I think I want this corner to be a little bit lower, so we'll chop that out. We'll go ahead and fill that and fill that in. Now we're gonna need a combination of stairs. On Java, if we place a stair above a chest, we can still open a chest, it's magic. Then I was thinking just to make sure my gazebo feels consistent in a hole here, I'll fill that in with uh, planks and I'll leave it open like that. So anytime I wanna access the chest, I just like jump right up here and open the chest. Next up, to basically finish this farm, we're gonna put another block right there. We're gonna jump up here and drop some water inside of the farm. 
Now, my friends, this is mob time. Hey, and you know what? Actually, 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 uh, let me make some small adjustments aesthetically. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Take it a step back from this thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It should be different than the rest of the build. Anyways, this is mob time. I don't know about you, but look, I've been, I've been feeling a little bit lonely in this world. And we live by like a bunch of forests. I should be able to find this mob in any of the forests. Uh huh, uh huh, another sheep. Oh, you're beautiful. You gotta watch out for what I'm looking for. You gotta be careful. A chicken, oh my. A chicken, oh my. They're all over the place. Every mob, except what I'm needing. There is one mob, a very loyal, trusty mob. The mob that will make your world feel a million times less lonely. A mob that hates basically everything we've been talking about today. It'll spawn in all these forest bombs. Sometimes. Terrible news, always sad, it's all black and white. I've scavenged, scoured the entire forest or what feels like it and not a single one of my friends that I was looking for. But great news, there are cows all over the place and the cow is what I need for today. You come with me, you're tempted with wheat. Oh, well, 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 look who's coming out of every single tree apparently. Ah, more cows. I brought a cow back in a, in a boat. I mean, I guess the more the merrier. I really only needed two though. <laughs> you all come with me. Let's go. Ah, yeah. Well, that lost one. It's got, I got probably got too far. Two is fine. Back over at home, sweet home, with these two cows. It's time to put them inside of the farm. Now, this wonderful farm right here, the Cow Crusher, is one of my favorites. I like to make this in every single world. This farm relies off of a mechanic called Entity Cramming. Entity Crushing. Oh no! You're supposed to jump in. Yeah. You know what? Let me just. Uh, no. I don't want the milk. I don't want the milk. Let me please just get the, uh, no, I don't want the milk. No. Nah, you know what? Fine, fine. One wild cow does fine. It, it's cool. Now we put a fence on top of the farm and it's basically good to go. This little beauty right here, the cow crusher, it's amazing. This works off of a mechanic called entity cramming. Essentially, when we have more than 24 entities, or in other words, mobs basically inside of a block, the game will automatically take some out. This thing will take a while to get started up, but I'll repeatedly breed the cows. Eventually, there'll be so many cows that they'll just be crushed out of the world. The drops will be thrown into this bottom spot right here. Unfortunately, this one is Java only. The Cow Crusher is an absolutely beautiful contraption that I'll show you exactly how it works once I get it up and running. For now, to get this thing actually ready to go, I'm just gonna have to repeatedly, continuously breed these cows. When it comes to breeding mobs, when you breed two, you're gonna get one baby. If you continue this process, breeding mobs up as your farm expands and expands and expands, well, of course, logically, that process will only get faster. When starting up any mob-based mob farm, whether it be sheep, whether it's chicken, whether it's cows, this process will always start out a little bit slow, but as you get more mobs, it'll pick up. Now, there are two final things I'd like to get done in today's episode. Camelotl, you're gonna move with me. Now that we have a little bit more going on at the base over here, I would like to move the camel into a, a better temporary pen. We're gonna put it right over here inside of the fences. Oh, you know what? I forgot about that because the camel is so tall. It'll just walk right over the fence. Oh, dang it. All right, well, change of plans. If I walk you into this, you got a hole now. I <laughs> Try and get out of that, Camelotl. Bad camel. Behave. Last but not least, I got a tree growing hack for you. Now that I kind of know what I have going on over here and what's going to actually stay where I have buildings, I want to come back in and fill it in with some nice tall trees. Let's say I wanted a tall tree sitting right there in the middle. To get a nice tall tree, you're going to start with an oak sapling. You're going to pillar up with two random blocks, doesn't matter. Then we're going to take some cobblestone and build a small brace. Then we remove these temporary blocks and give it a little bit of time. If you paid close attention to what I did when I was building the sweet berry farm, then you would know that I did this right along the river. I like the tall, beautiful, giant oak trees. I feel like they fit with builds a whole lot better. It won't work every single time, but it's a better method than just planting a sapling down and hoping it grows into something big. By planting a couple of these trees over here and putting the braces, hopefully eventually, like a couple episodes time, we'll come back and have more mobs than ever because I keep breeding them and also more tall trees than ever too. To show it off for you a little bit, right over here is exactly what I'm talking about. Check this out. This brace, it finally grew after a lot of time, but I planted a sapling, put that brace right there, and then we get this beautiful giant oak tree. These tall trees right along the river right here next to the beautiful merch stand. Berry merch out now. Farms and mob farms. Not only are they one of my favorite things to do in Minecraft, but also they're one of the most important things to have. Your three basic mobs, sheep, cow, and chicken, that's how you farm them. That's also an intro to crop farming. We'll be talking a whole lot more about this stuff and then specific better farms later on in the series. Subscribe so you don't miss it. Check out a world download for channel members. Thank you all so much for watching. Smash like, subscribe.
Let me know down in the comments what you think about 1.20 stuff, and I will see you all tomorrow. It's been me, Waddles. Goodbye.